this is Miss Andrea. Um, hi, it's been a while. Today we're going to talk about homeschooling, what people think homeschooling is. And we're going to do this through um, reviewing some Reddit conversations. I don't know about you, but as, as, as inane as they can be sometimes, I find myself listening to Reddit stories all the time. And so I wanted to see what Reddit um, kind of has going on in the homeschool world, um, besides the anti-homeschooling thread, which we'll have to talk about that at another time. So let's go. <clears throat> I need my tea. Okay, so the question is, what do you think of homeschooling? And OP asks... Okay, so the motivation for this question is based on a majority of posts I'm seeing in the subreddit about how people are homeschooling their kids. To me, most posts seem to indicate that a large number of parents relegate the task to online platforms. Instead of parents taking on the responsibility of teaching, kids are instead placed in front of the computer to do lessons or watch videos. Kids are not the primary educator, the computer is. I'm curious, is this what homeschooling has become these days? Is this what most parents are doing? In my humble view, the homeschooling child's primary teacher is his or her parent. The parent will buy the curriculum, go over it themselves, and then present it in home with their child. Use of computers is limited to downtime, research pro projects, essay writing, etc. Do I have an outdated view of homeschooling? Maybe it's because I was a teacher for so many years. I just feel like I myself would be the one educating my kids. What do you think? OP definitely has an outdated view of homeschooling. Um, we are in the digital age, but I'm going to reserve my comment till after we've read what a few other people have to say. Um, it's definitely a broader definition than you may be thinking. When we first began, my wife was a primary teacher for nearly everything. I would pitch in here and there, but <clears throat> was mostly working. As we have gotten older and, in, and into areas that just aren't our expertise, we have to look to outside help. So my ninth grader now does a computer-based math and science and an online class for Spanish. Language arts, history, and so forth are all independent work for him. Which, he's, which he handles quite well, occasionally just coming to us when something doesn't make sense. But homeschooling for us is not just the academics. It's about learning how to do laundry, make a bed, tie your tie, cut the grass, cook a meal, and clean up after it. <coughs> I agree with some of that. Um, I wasn't one to make my children do housework as a part of homeschooling, um, but I'm was a very high academic homeschooling. I mean, you had to clean up after yourself and not leave me more housework to do. That was a no-no. But no, the basics are the basics. Learn to be human, homeschool, separate. For me, just for me. Um, okay, here's another one. I tried curriculums. Most had a lot of computer time. They do. Hated them, stressed me out. Instead, I looked up what they should be learning in each grade. If you already knew it, went up a grade in the subject and looked at the next. It made a list of what we should be doing. I essentially have my own curriculum built as time goes by. I take it week by week, day by day if I have to. I started an entire school year plan, but we gave up on following that very quickly. We'll print out worksheets, have videos, packets, games, crafts, etc. lined up to go along with what we're focusing on. We sit down together and I teach him directly. If he asks about something that I have no clue about, internet, lol. If he expresses an internet in something, if he expresses an interest in something, uh, then I research it and work it in. One thing I've learned, he teaches me how to teach him. I've only been doing this for one and a half years, so I, have, I still have loads to learn. <clears throat> but for us and some of his reasons, I chose homeschooling. If I followed a curriculum along with just sitting him in front of a computer, I might as well send him to school. Yeah. 
the way we do it, I get instant firsthand knowledge of what he's struggling with, what's boring him, what he has trouble focusing on, and what he needs to move on from. That would help him retain info. What sparks his interest, what we need to do more of, etc., without the stress of following someone else's course. One of the perks of homeschooling for me was building a school that worked for him, not him working for the school. Doing it this way, his learning is 100% catered to him. I 100% agree with what this um, person has written, um, but making a whole year's plan and then scrapping it, unless it didn't work, um, just seems like you're making it harder on yourself than it needs to be. But sometimes the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And so you'll have a whole year planned out and realize quickly that your child doesn't take to it. Um, someone replied to them and said, 1000% one of the best benefits of the hands-on approach is that you can actually tell when they aren't grasping something. My kids can click buttons on the computer and even fill out workbooks correctly. And I cross it off my to-do list. Then sometimes 20 minutes later, I realize, okay, wow, that did not stick at all. And upon further discussion, it's evident they didn't follow the point of the exercise at all. Um, someone else replies, what you're describing is what a lot of people do. I personally much prefer to be the main teacher for my kids when they are elementary level. I like when I like them to have hands-on live instructor and to incorporate games and a variety of instruction techniques into things. At some point though, the primary educator may end up with too many subjects on their plates. They may also begin to deal with bad attitudes during instruction from older kids or become aware that they don't have the expertise in a certain subject to teach it or the time to learn given they are homeschooling many grades and subjects per day as well. So they need to find a resource that can better do the job. In those cases, you can start to see online courses or outsourcing at co-ops coming into the picture. These are valuable tools that can make it possible for families to continue to homeschool and be the primary coordinator of their children's education, if not the primary instructor for every subject anymore. It is much better than trying to do too much and dropping the ball on a lot of things. I have never tried 100% online programs where all the teaching, school work, and grades are done on a program with the parent being very hands-off. That is one form of homeschooling that I think works for parents who want their kids to be at home but can't actually instruct or for kids who are particularly difficult to instruct but do well with an online program. A friend of mine has found this to be true with a special needs son. It has brought them peace and progress. Hmm. Yeah, for me, the only reason to do, light fix itself. For me, the only reason to do a 100% um, online program is if you don't know how long you plan on homeschooling and you know that the child will be returning to traditional school. This way you can do something accredited and um, easily slide the child back into the school environment. Let's see what else people have to say. Let's see, let's see. I homeschooled using textbooks, workbooks, manipulatives, school supplies, and a computer. I even use a couple of apps on my phone. What we use varies daily, but the vast majority of instruction is done without a screen. Initially, I tried an online school, but I found it to be a lot of busy work and developmentally an appropriate amount of screen time expected, five to six hours in kindergarten. I was a teacher before homeschooling, five to six hours kindergarten is ridiculous. Um, there are online homeschool programs um, where the amount of kindergarten work is two hours max. But kindergarten, 
like some apps to reinforce things are really cool, but the internet's not a requirement for kindergarten. It's it's a fun addition. Um, someone else says, I think it's smarter to use a variety. Go all in on being primary teacher for the curriculum that you excel at. For the ones you're a little rusty or has not ever been your strong suit, should look into different ways of teaching it. Homeschooling to me simply means school and the safety of your own home. That is not the true definition of homeschooling. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. And and COVID changed the definition of homeschooling. I don't know if we're ever going to get it through to the masses that it's a different definition. It is the education of children at home by their parents, by their parents. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone whose handle is ignoring the kids <coughs> wrote, my view on homeschooling is that I am planning out the child's education and finding the best resources to teach them. I do not want, I do not want me children. Okay. I thought that was weird. I do not want my children limited by what I know. Not when there are so many amazing resources out there. And yes, that often means curriculums that are online. My children's learning style aligns well to using games for reinforcement for info. They also return info best when seeing and hearing it together, which YouTube offers very well. Plus videos can be paused and rewound as needed. I wish I had the resources the internet offers a child. I learned best via video as well. Lecture never worked well for me. Reading if done the way, reading if done the right way worked, but just paragraphs of text were easy for me to lose track in. My daughter also loves all the educational graphic novels out there. Again, it aligns well with her learning style. It's pretty good. My kids are far too independent for me to hold their hand every moment of the day. There comes a time. Um, there are three parents available throughout the day to assist with questions. They also have yum for math help. Yum. I need to look that up. 90% um, of our work is done on the computer. However, I do post all assignments to Google Classrooms for communication purposes. And that's mostly because of today's professional environment. I don't like that program, but I used to post my personal children's assignments in Google Calendar. Get up and I've already got your work posted. Um, we homeschool because that's the best for my eldest and her ADHD. If I'm doing it for one, may as well do it for all three. Works great for us, especially five years in. Many people start homeschooling for many reasons. Some, like you it sounds, do it for pedagogical preference for being the one to educate the child. That's definitely what I used to start typically think of. I think there are lots of other reasons people homeschool though, especially nowadays. Sometimes a local school might not offer the right social environment, support a disability, or high quality curriculum the child needs. So homeschooling is a better alternative. Sometimes it's a physical disability that makes school too challenging. Sometimes the kid has a professional career, sports or acting, or the family has a lifestyle, frequent moving digital nomads, etc. That makes traditional school infeasible. Okay, infeasible. Since in these cases, the primary driver isn't a pedagogical or a philosophical one, these families are looking for a simple solution for the curriculum piece. And then some families might be philosophically aligned with teaching their learner, but they want to be more of a facilitator, thought partner, rather than a central place all learning flows from. Because it's impossible to be the central place that all learning flows from. Um, they want to decide which curriculum to use, but not deliver it themselves. Or they, want, or they may want to teach some topics they're passionate about and leave others to the experts. There is a lot of great curriculum and content out there and a lot of bad as well. Or perhaps they want their learner connected with an online school community, even though they're learning from home. 
um, there's definitely a blurred line between homeschool and home-based online school. Huge. Two completely different things. And since COVID, they've been smushed. Um, and there are a lot of online programs. Right. And there are a lot of online programs that deliberately blur the line because they know that homeschool doesn't mean one thing. Every child has different strengths. My kids with ADHD are much like me and respond very well to apps. Some computer programs are incredibly well designed and teach some subjects more quickly and effectively than I can even though I am a former teacher certified to teach at their grade levels. Parents whose kids are thriving using digital resources shouldn't feel guilty about incorporating them into homeschool lessons. When I was in school in the 1990s, computer games like Jumpstart Third Grade were incredibly useful. Specifically third grade, okay. Were incredibly useful to me and I enjoyed learning from them. Just because the only resources available to homeschool parents in the early days of the moment were textbooks doesn't mean we can't make use of new innovations. There has been so much research in recent years, and now kids learn that just wasn't known back then. A lot of online programs designed around that research and successful results are hard to ignore. If you haven't been in a classroom in a while, you might be shocked at the amount of time they spend on computers in the classroom. At our public schools, each student has a laptop. They bring it home every day and the older ones regularly use them in class to access various things. Videos included in the lesson, online learning platforms, very helpful in the class size of over 40 students, teacher presentations, coding, keyboarding, research, etc. It's how they track their assignments, due dates, hand in assignments, track upcoming events, contact their teachers, and take state assessments. My son's school don't even have science or social studies books for their classes. Just whatever the teacher puts together, videos, online teacher presentations, and researching different info online. I'm a former teacher too. For our homeschooling, we do a mix of textbook and online seventh grader. I'm definitely involved all along the way. I feel like what you describe is what I think of homeschooling traditionally as because that's what I grew up experiencing it to an extent being like, and I'll add the caveat that we also outsource or seek out anyone who we believe would be a better teacher in a particular area and could offer a richer education to our kids as we go. Um, we do that with music because although Hubs plays multiple instruments beautifully, he had such a bad experience with his instruction in it growing up that he didn't want to teach it. That's me and art. We have a family friend who's taught for many years, and it's just amazing who fills that role. Even though I'm the primary educator, and I always thought I'd be our kid's math teacher all the way through, when we hit a certain level together, I found myself struggling because of bad experience I had with it as kids at those levels. And I was honestly super happy to pass the torch to Hubs when he asked to teach it. He's actually way better suited because he works with higher math daily and finds deep joy in it. <clears throat> he also brings in the coolest trails and things related to aerospace safety and tech because that's what he does. So he's really neat in the best ways. Some so it's really neat in the best ways sometimes and fascinating. For language, we definitely have turned to native speakers. Smart, like husband's parents in the local cultural community center for Korean and my stepdad for a long time and a long time for another co-op for Spanish. The kids have a long, excuse me, the kids have a living history class at their co-op, um, which I'm so, so grateful for. I love that they get to experience it through the heart of someone who's so passionate about it and she got her master's in it because although we cover history at home, it's definitely not my favorite thing. They also take dance there. Yep, also not my forte, same with PE. I think we have the opportunity now with homeschooling because it has grown so tremendously to create an incredibly individualized education with all the resources and wonderful people around us that it's no longer odd to step away from the more traditional model of just mom or dad teaching everything and do what's what works for you in all the ways it does. Edit. 
Sorry, I feel like I honed in on the wrong part of the question. Parents being main teachers versus digital learning. We also absolutely include online learning games, content and documentaries, YouTube for all kinds of reinforcement and fun. I definitely grew up with lots of do's learning games at home, like mixed up fairy tales, math world rescue, sea school, and Mario typing tutor, and the Oregon Trail, cross country USA, Carmen San Diego, American Girl Games, and internet research. I pause because my kids use those and I'm wondering how old am I? Um, <laughs> C++, CAD, etc. at school intermixed with the regular book stuff. I loved it and I'm so glad my kids can do those kinds of things as part of their learning experience. Someone said, to answer your question directly, I think that it isn't my place to have an opinion on how other people educate their kids. I don't mean to come across as rude, so please forgive me. But in my opinion, how people school their kids just isn't something I have to worry about. So I don't. Why did you answer? <laughs> Public school, private school, homeschool, unschool, computer school. It's just really not my business. I use curriculum and write lessons plan. And mm, I use curriculum and write lesson plans, but use computer supplements. I'm so glad we have things like education.com, where my oldest finally understood, understood the math concept because he loved playing Dino Crunch, which was much more fun than what I was doing. I love YouTube videos and documentaries that give more depth and visual aid to our history lessons. I love using OutSchool to give my kids an opportunity to learn from someone else. For the most part, however, most of our day to day schooling is pencil, paper, scissors, glue, and a lot of books. So I guess you could say I'm a bit of both, but that doesn't make it how I, make how I teach my kids better than how someone else chooses to. It's just how it works for us. With that, wishing all of my fellow homeschoolers, homeschool parents, a great weekend. Let's see. So everything's starting to sound the same. What I'm not seeing a lot of, I've only seen maybe one or two, is high school kids. Because for me, I feel like homeschooling starts off extremely hands-on, you know, with mom or dad teaching um, the student. And then as a child gets older, you teach the child to be a more independent learner. You start bringing in resources like apps and games and things of that nature. And um, you teach the child to be more self-sufficient in their education, um, to you give them assignments and deadlines and they learn to hand those things in. Um, you can give them assignment and walk away and come back and it should be finished, you know, and, and these are kind of middle school years. So that by the time they get to high school, they are pretty self-motivated um, and self-sufficient. Whereas if they need your help, they will let you know. Um, which also means that the older they get, the more technology you will utilize, whether that be an online program or a series of online programs. I'm going to have to go through and make a new list of my favorite online programs because that has definitely changed in these last few years of our COVID. Um, they have changed. And I found that there are some math programs that are not only interactive, but they sense how your kids learn and what your kids need and teach that way. So it's very AI driven and the kids can get through a year of math in a matter of months. And I think that's super cool. Okay. So yeah. Um, all in all, I think the younger the child is, 
the more hands-on time that the parent needs to spend with the child. That said, um, young children, kindergarten, first grade, second, third grade, don't really need more than two hours a day. I think, okay, so now let's say fourth, fifth, sixth grade. I think the kids start showing independence. I think that the kids start showing independence during those grades. But I also still think that the parent needs to spend two hours a day helping them, understanding that the child is now homeschooling for four hours a day. So honestly, and I just realized this, I don't think that the amount of daily involvement a parent needs to spend homeschooling their kids changes. I think it's typically always going to be 90 minutes to two hours a day, whether they the kid is homeschooling for that short amount of time because they're in the younger grades or whether they're in high school and they're homeschooling six hours, three or four days a week. Um, and so now, although the time that the parent has spent homeschooling year to year kind of stays the same, the time the child has spent homeschooling goes up. And that's where we see the independence in the child um, doing more work on their own and just more work in general. So just go back and let's make sure that I answered this question. So is this what homeschooling has basically become these days? Um, homeschooling does take advantage of tools. Um, I get troubled when it's all tools. I get troubled when it's all workbooks. I did an essay that caused me to lose a lot of followers, not an essay, a video that caused me to lose a lot of followers about two years back, um, about paces, um, you know, the, the little workbooks um, that children are given. That's a full curriculum. I, if this thing doesn't start running, I'm eating it. Um, um, so I did this video a couple years ago about homeschool paces, um, which is a popular old tiny curriculum where you give the children little workbooks and they fill them out and they give them back and you correct them. And um, what I said is, I mean, it's fine for some subjects um, and it's fine to homeschool with, but if there isn't a, a discussion that goes with it, then we're just doing busy work and the child doesn't retain anything. Um, so whether you use an old school program like that or whether you use Khan Academy um, or one of the newer tools, um, to me, it's all useless because anything the child learns is temporary. If you haven't done anything to reinforce what they've learned by requiring essays, by having discussions, by maybe visiting somewhere that reinforces what they've learned, it can't just all be busy work. There needs to be some give and take. There needs to be some testing. There needs to be some application of concepts learned. Okay. And so that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this kind of video, man, Reddit is a treasure trove. Let me know. Um, if you have any homeschool questions, because I love answering homeschool questions. Sometimes I answer them directly. Sometimes I answer them directly and I make a video. Um, please subscribe and ask questions in the comment section. Until next time.